Hey guys, I'm going to go over how to graph uh, real quick with you. So this is a Desmos that I would have had done with you uh, if I was with you today, but unfortunately I cannot. Um, so I would want you guys, this is the first one, I'm not gonna have you guys do any graphing. Like you don't have the Desmos in front of you, so there's no big deal. But you would first just listen, start here, right? Start the y-intercept. And then from there, your slope is the four over three, okay? So you're going to go up four to the right three. So you're going to go up four, rise four, and then run three, and then put your other point right there. If you wanted to keep the pattern going, you could do another rise four, run three. Okay, and that would be a point as well. And then let's go ahead and draw this line through all three of these points if we could. And there's your graph. Now notice a couple things. This is a positive slope. It's a po Do you see any negatives next to this fraction? So since there's no negatives, you know it's going to go from left to right. It's going to go up in the air. Okay. Remember, negative slopes go down. Okay, they can go down this way, or they can even be like a little, like gradual negative slope. Okay, those are all negative slopes. We want to make sure we know these are all positive slopes going up to the sky, even straight up like that. That's still going up. Okay. All right, the next question I want to give you. Oops. I want you to look at this one and try to give me an idea of what would you, what would be the name of this equation? What would you call this equation? Okay. Remember a couple things. This is your y-intercept. That's part of your equation. And you need to find other points on the line. I'm going to help you guys out a little. Sorry about that. It's my air conditioner. But that should help you. Okay. Try to give me the full name of this equation. There should be a y equals something x plus or minus something too. All right. Now, if you struggle, well, I just give you the question on the ad puzzle, but it's negative 1. Negative 1 is going to go at the end. So y equals, I'm going to put negative 1. That is my y-intercept. What's my slope? I go up. It's a positive slope. I'm going up. Oops, that's supposed to be an arrow up. I'm going up and 1. And then what am I going to the right? 4. You guys see that? So then it's going to be 1 over 4. X. And this is exactly what you could write the equation as. All right. There's going to be maybe some questions you're going to have to type out. Okay. All right. Next question. I want you to take your time. I said use your notebook for work here. And what you're going to do is make sure that you can uh, figure out basically, I want to know the slope of the graph. Okay. I'm going to ask that in that puzzle. What's the slope of the graph? What's the slope of the table? And basically, you're going to tell me which one has a larger slope. Is this company B or company A? Okay. Now, let's go over this. If I was going to give you a help here, I would go up and over. Now, let's make sure we take a look at the units. What are these units going by? They're going from here to zero to 20 to 40. So you know they're going by 20s. So if we start here, it's going to be 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So you're going to go up 100. What are we going over? Now look at these lines. Look at these units. We're going from 2 here, 2 to 4. So they're going by 2s. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is 10 spots because it's starting here, right? So that's over 10. So that's your slope. Can you reduce this fraction at all? How many times does 10 go into 100? It should be, you can cancel these zeros out. It should be 10, right? Your slope for the company A should be 10. Now what's company B's slope? This is a little different. You're actually going to go ahead and use the formula, right? You're going to go 95 minus what? 150. I know there's no Y's here, but this is Y. This is X. And then you're going to go 5 
minus 10. And you're going to get, this is going to become negative 55, the numerator. And this is going to become negative 5. How many times is 5 going to 55? They're both negative, so it's going to be positive. All right? And it becomes positive 11. 5 times 11 is 55. So which one's bigger? Company B. And that means it's costing more per item. The cost is 11 per item over here. It's 10 per item on this side. All right? Okay. Use your calculator on this one. Use your calculator and give me the decimal. I want to know what the decimal, and it says rate of change. Okay. Decimal, and what's the rate of change? What does rate of change mean? Just give me the slope. If you can give me the slope, that's all I care about. All right, guys? All right, this one, once we'll skip this one for now. We may go back to it. And this one, you can't graph it. All right, hey, what's the rate of change for this graph? Take a look at it. What's the rate of change for this graph? I'll give you a second. And if we start here, and we go up and over, do you see the change? Do you see the patterns happening? These are all points. So what is it going up and what is it going over? My rate of change should be up one. Look at the unit, up one. It's going up one over two. This is actually pretty, pretty accurate for what it's going to be. Up one over two, and that's your answer, OK? If this was a decimal, I would have made it 0.5. OK, this one's a little more challenging as well. What does Paulina make per hour? What does Paulina make per hour? All right, for this one, I want you to, you can start anywhere you'd like, but it's a little easier to pick coordinates you can see clearly. So what about from here? That's a coordinate to here. Oops, I want to use a straight line tool. See, that's not a coordinate. I mean, it's in the middle, but you can't tell exactly where it is on the graph. Neither can you tell this one. But I can tell that this is over, what, over 4, up 60. I can tell that. And this is what? Over 6, up, what are they going by? 10s, so 90. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go there. And I'm going to do it here. And I'm going to try to figure out what is that slope. Can you figure out that slope? And can you reduce it? Let's see if you can figure it out. Look at your units down here. And look at the units here. Let's see if you can figure it out and reduce the fraction. Which one would you pick? If I look at this. This is at 60. Then I'm going to go up. They're going up by 10. So 10, 20, 30. All this is, oh, it's still in the straight line tool. All this is, is going up 30. All right. And then what is this going over? It went from 4 to 6. So it's actually pretty true. It's just going over 2. Well, 30 over 2, what does that equal? 30 over 2 equals 15. Okay. And you can explain your thinking. I, you know, I reduced 30 over 2. I knew these were actual points, too. Okay. Excellent. All right. For this one, I want you to find the whole equation from the table. You're going to give me the slope first. And then if you remember, I want you to plug in any coordinate, any coordinate you want, and go ahead and give me the entire equation. Okay. Now for the slope. Move it up a little bit. I'm going to run out of the room. 2 minus 11, right? Y minus Y. Negative 1 minus 2. This equals negative 9. This, if you plug in the calculator, is going to equal negative 3. And I know 3 goes into 9 three times. So here is my slope, and that's how I'd write it out. You guys are capable of doing this, okay? This is my x, this is my y. I'm going to plug in an x, and I'm going to plug in a y. And guess what? I'm going to pick a friendly number. So I'm actually going to pick the 211. I'm not going to pick the negative 1, 2, because I just don't want to deal with the negative. I want to deal with positives. You can choose any coordinate on this table. So 2 goes here, because that's the x. 11 goes here. 
Does 11 equal three times two is six? Does 11 equal six? No, but I can add something to six to make, a, make it be equal, to make it a true statement. And if I do this and I add five, it makes it true. So that's what my final answer would be. All right, you gotta be able to get there. You gotta be able to get there with this one. Ooh, good question. I decided to start a savings account at my bank. I put in $4,000 to start, and then I put in $500 every month. Write an equation up to show the situation. So there's a starting point of starting 4,000, and then there's $500 every month. What you start your bank account with, let's see if you can write your equation out. Should be y equals, remember, something, x, and I'll even give you a hint, it's plus something, okay? So, what if it was not x? What if I said months, would that help you? y equals something times months, that might help you too, because it's actually 50, not 50, it's $500 every month. Remember the slope always deals if there's a time period like this, that's always going to be the slope. Okay, that's a little cheat code. And this is your starting point. Your starting point, you start with $4,000 in the bank. That's pretty cool. And that would be your starting point. And this would be a perfect equation. You're going to have a problem just like this on the benchmark. Take your time on it. Look at this y-intercept. See wherever it starts is the y-intercept. What is the time frame? And your letters might be different. It's okay. Like what if this was $500 per month and they labeled it M instead of X? It's months. And what if they said instead of Y, they said C for cash? That could also be an answer. All right, guys? Let's go. Ooh. Try this one in your calculator. Do the best you can for this one. The calculator should come in handy. If you did this with the calculator, okay, take your time. All I care about is the slope. If you did put this in your calculator, it's going to be weird to see because it's all covered and I'm going to try to show you. But this minus this. You were supposed to do four dollars minus point or four point twelve. You would get negative point twelve, right? And that would be your numerator. And then zero minus two, right? Y minus y over x minus x. Hopefully, you guys get what I'm doing. I don't have much room. And then two into negative twelve. If you did this math, they're both negative, so it's going to turn positive. What's half of twelve cents? If I said cut twelve cents in half, it would be six cents, right? Six cents. Okay. All right, let's keep going. How full was the water tank before being emptied? What is that called in a linear equation? Interesting. Look at this graph. How full is it when it started? If you look at it properly, how full it was, it started at 30. Look how full it is at the beginning. So I would say it's 30. It is called... The y, I don't know why it does that. Y, why does it do that? Y intercept. Okay, for some reason it makes it all weird. It is called the y intercept, okay? So 30 is your y intercept. Next question. We're at 30. It wants to know how fast is it losing water? And what I just showed you right now is I showed you other points on this line. If you can't see it, Hopefully you can take a little better look. Actually, you know what? I can do this and I can move this up and I can even get, oh, hold up. I'm getting fancy here. All right. And I want to know what is the slope? And it should be super easy for you to find this. You're going down and to the right. Down and to the right. Down and to the right. What are we going down? What are we going down? Is it down five? And what are we going over? It's three units, but look at my units. They're going by, by what, 33.33%? It's weird. They're going by thirds. So one third, two thirds, and then a full. So it's down, negative five is your answer. Okay. One more question, guys. So for this last one, this one's a little bit of a trip, and I want to make sure this is what your last problem is going to look like on the test. So what it's asking is, oh, I didn't let you. It said, how long will it take to have the water tank empty? How long would it take to have the water tank to go to zero 
water, zero water level, how long would it take for this is at 30? How long would it take to get all the way down to zero? Now, where would that be if it's here and it keeps going down after three hours, we've gone down. How long would it take for it to get all the way as it keeps going? I'm gonna give you a little bit of help. I have this straight line tool. I can use this one if I want. And I want you to give me an answer on this, okay? Do the best you can. So how long would it take if you're going down and over, down and over, down, over, down, over. I'm still doing it, down and over. How about one more? Down and over. And that means at this point, I'm gonna change color here. I want you to see this. If this goes all the way to here, basically I'm wanting to know where is this point here where it eventually touches and it gets to zero. See how this is at zero now? It went all the way down to zero. How many hours did it take? This would be five hours and this would be six. There's a couple ways you could have solved it, but six hours is your answer. How could you have done this? Well, every hour it's losing five, right? We said the slope was five. So every hour is five. It started with 30. How many fives are in 30? All right, you gotta take your time on this kind of question. It's kind of difficult. All right, so that's the rest of your head puzzle. I would love for you guys now to go ahead and do the Nearpod, student paced Nearpod for your homework. And then come Thursday, you're gonna be taking the benchmark, okay? You're gonna be, we'll do a quick little review. We'll have our work in front of us, making sure you're showing all your work, and then you'll be taking the test the whole time with me. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.